In this next section, we're going to talk about the tripod. And I'm gonna just jump right in here and say that the tripod is the single most important piece of equipment that you're gonna use in order to shoot football well, more so than the camera, okay? Cameras come in different types, but they're all HD and they're all pretty good and they're all serviceable for what you're doing. But the tripod makes the shooter. If you don't have a tripod with fluid movement left and right, up and down, if you have herky-jerky motions and uh, flimsy movement that's always bobbing up and down, it's really going to affect the quality of your footage and your ability to follow the action. So the tripod is essential. And just to demonstrate that point, I'm gonna tell you a quick story about one of the people that worked for my company. He came out on a trial basis and did one game for me and the footage was really lacking. It was shaky and bumpy and I just didn't think I could give that to a client and use him on a regular basis. Well, he was disappointed to hear that but he told me that the tripod that he used was his roommate's or his was somewhere else or whatever the story was. He promised me that the next week he would have a better tripod and his footage would improve. And I said, okay, I gave him one more chance. So whatever he did, whether he bought a new one or whether he got his actual one back, he shot the following week and the footage was spectacular. Beautiful movements left and right, in and out, it was terrific. And that's when I really realized for the first time that the shooter is made by how good his or her tripod is. So the tripod is essential. So in an upcoming section, we're gonna actually set the tripod up and I'm gonna show you how to adjust its settings to work best with your style and your ability to move left, right, up and down. But in this section, we're quickly gonna talk about the kind of tripod you should be using if you're not using it already. What you wanna to try to avoid is what you're seeing here on the screen, and these are tripods for sale in an electronics store. These are mostly flimsy plastic tripods that were meant for still cameras, just for setting up to shoot something that's not moving. They don't have the ability to move the camera left and right very well, and they can't elevate much more than about right here. And as you're gonna see, it's really important for your tripod to have the ability to have higher legs and an even higher middle section that goes up because there may be an instance if you're shooting from the bleachers and you don't want heads in your way, you might need to elevate that camera really high. What you're really looking for in a tripod is something like this, and this is what I use. This is a sturdy metal base tripod. It has a fluid head which allows smooth movement up, down, left, right, and the best thing about it is it elevates. Here's a shot of the tripod at full elevation in case you ever needed it to go especially high. If you have a tablet or a smartphone and you're using that, you still wanna get a really good tripod because the mount is something that you can purchase separately. You mount your tablet or your phone to the mount and then you attach it to the tripod. So it doesn't really matter what kind of camera you're using. The key, as I've said before, is the tripod. And the tripod has the ability to allow for the kind of smooth movements that give you more freedom to focus on the concepts that I'm going to teach you and not worry about shaking or holding the camera steady or keeping it from bobbing up and down. This is the most important thing. And in an upcoming module, as I said, you're going to learn how to use it and set it properly so that it works with you, not against you. After your camera and your tripod, the third and final video in this section has to do with camera accessories. Now there are several I'm gonna show you here in the next few minutes, and I'm actually gonna break this up into two parts. Your mandatory accessories, which I feel you absolutely have to have with you on every shoot, and some optional accessories, which I think will make you a better shooter if you decide you wanted to use them. The key point here through all of them though is that you can't miss anything as a shooter. You can't have a situation where you miss a play because something went wrong, a battery died, uh, it's just unacceptable. So all of these things will help you see the field better, hear better, uh, not run out of tape or anything like that. So these are all important. And we're gonna go through them one by one, starting with the mandatory, which there are three, and we'll start right now. Yes, the first thing I wanna talk about is camera batteries. And I have two what are called bricks in my hand right here. These are six to nine hour batteries so that I know with one of these in my camera, there's no chance I'm gonna run out if the game runs long. Even if one does, I might know about it. I can switch out at halftime or at the end of the third quarter. There is no way I'm going to run out of battery. That is an excuse that doesn't fly with anybody. You must have extra batteries in your bag in addition to the one that's in your camera. Now, some of you are probably saying, I don't have to worry about batteries, I plug my camera in. And to that I say, that's a risky proposition. I personally would never recommend anybody plug their camera in. Unless you work for a school and shoot at the same place every time and know where there's an outlet that might be indoors that you can run a cable to, there's no reason why you should be risking showing up with AC power and hoping you're gonna be able to get 
uh, electricity because sometimes you won't it'll be off sometimes it rains and you don't want to have something plugged in when it rains sometimes you have to move your camera you might not have an extension cord long enough you might have someone knock out the plug there are a whole bunch of reasons why AC power is not a good idea so again batteries extra batteries fully charged are the most important thing you can have with you and if you're shooting with an iPad or an iPhone or something like it make sure it's fully charged before you go out and it's also good to have a backup portable charger so if you start running low you can plug that in and get some juice that way. The second item we're going to talk about is media, a place to hold your footage. Back in the day we used mini DV tapes which had a limit of 60 or in this case 80 minutes and if the game ran long and you ran out of tape you had to quickly pop the tape out and put another one in. That's not the case anymore with memory cards like these which I use in my camera and you might use something similar in yours. If you get something higher than a 16 gigabyte card you should have three hours of footage which should be plenty. However, Bring an extra one. Always have at least two sources of media, maybe a third one hidden in your bag somewhere in case of a dire emergency because you cannot run out of footage. You cannot have something happen to this where it goes wrong or gets faulty uh, and you just can't have your game end because you don't have footage. So make sure you have extra media all the time. And as far as your tablet or phone goes, be sure you've got adequate space to hold at least an hour of footage, if not more. Rain protection is the third and final item that I would say is mandatory because if you're shooting outdoors and it starts raining and the players are still playing, you have to keep shooting. You can't tell a coach that you have to shut down because of the rain. You have to keep shooting. So you have to have something to protect yourself. Uh, for a small camera like a camcorder, I've seen people take plastic bags like from a supermarket and mold them around their camera. I've seen people take Ziploc bags and cut a hole in them and fit them over the camera. Uh, but for larger cameras like the prosumer camera I showed you, I have a professional rain cover for mine and this allows me to fit right over the camera as I'm going to show you in a later module and I can keep my camera covered with the lens still exposed. Then of course you have the old fashioned way and that's an umbrella. Uh, some people I've seen trying to shoot with an umbrella, the problem with that is you have to hold the umbrella with one hand, that's one less hand you have to shoot with. So you're using one hand which limits your ability to control the zoom or other functions, plus if you're dealing with a lot of wind, which usually accompanies rain, you've constantly got this thing blowing around and it's really hard to shoot with one hand while holding a wind blown umbrella in the second. But one way or another you have to have some sort of protection for the rain. So make sure you don't show up for a game without a Ziploc bag, a plastic bag, an umbrella, or a rain cover, otherwise you're gonna have to shut your camera down and you may even do some damage to it. So protect yourself from the rain. Now let's take a look at some additional accessories which although I don't think they're mandatory, they can certainly help you become a better shooter. We're gonna start with something that I feel can be the most helpful accessory of all the ones I can show you. And it goes by several names, but I like to refer to it as a zoom remote. And as you can see, it's attached to the handle of your tripod and it allows you to zoom in and widen out as well as record and stop all with one hand. And as you can see, it's very convenient. I can be moving left, right, up or down with my tripod, simultaneously zooming in or out or recording or not recording. So it really makes things easier because it frees up your other hand to hold the tripod or if it's raining you could be holding an umbrella. But it's a great tool especially if you can learn to control it really well because it gives you the best chance to have smooth camera work. Most high school football games take place at night, but they start early enough that you may have part of the game in daylight. And if that's the case, it may be hard to see what's going on in your viewfinder. So another accessory I recommend is this. I call it a viewfinder shader. And what it allows for is to block out some of the light that would make your viewfinder hard to see. Now it's real easy to attach. It just slides over your viewfinder like so. And as you can see, it provides a little more shade so that you can see what's going on better. Use this during day games for the first hour of night games and you'll find that it helps you and keeps you from having to use your eyepiece, which is an option. But if you like to shoot this way, this is gonna be a big help. 
This next item is something that might cost you a few bucks, but it might absolutely be worth it if it makes you a better shooter. And obviously this is a monitor. And what this does is it kind of takes the place of your viewfinder by attaching to the top of your camera and allowing you to see things bigger. So if you think you're gonna have a problem following the ball, uh, it's certainly an option. And you can put a hood over it like we saw in the previous section if you're worried about light and brightness and not being able to see it. So real self-explanatory item here. It's a monitor that hooks up to your camera and it'll absolutely help you see what you're shooting better, which can only make you better. A shotgun mic is another valuable tool that you might be able to use, especially if you're filming from above the press box and the field is far away. This is gonna give you a great sound pickup for down in the field. Now, not all cameras come with these. The prosumers, as I mentioned earlier, they do come with them, but you can buy a shotgun mic with different types of attachments that can plug into either an iPad uh, or a DSLR camera or even a small camcorder. You have to shop for that properly, but if you can get one of these and you want better sound for your games, a shotgun mic will do it. Small item here, but very important. This is a lens cleaner made of microfiber, and this is valuable for several reasons. Obviously, if you have dirt on your lens, you can give it a quick clean. It does not smudge or scratch. Also, if it's raining out, as you'll see in a future module, this might be a good way to quickly dry your lens if water is building up on it. You can dab at it and get some of the raindrops off. So a microfiber cloth is always a great thing to have in your bag and have with you at every game. The last item in this section is a monopod. And I just told you a few sections ago how the tripod is the most important piece of equipment you can use when shooting football. So why would I be showing you a monopod which has only one leg whereas a tripod has three? Well, this is mostly a reference for later in the course, we're gonna talk about shooting from the sideline and shooting from the end zone. Those are gonna be situations where you might not be able to use a tripod. And if that's the case, as opposed to shooting handheld, the monopod is your best bet. So look for this later in the course and remember that we saw it here. That's all for the accessories. Hopefully you can pick the ones from this section that you think will help you. None are mandatory, but they will all work for you if you want to implement them. So now let's move on to the next section. Let's actually go to the game and begin to set up. <laughs> 